Hey guys, so we are doing the inflammation webinar and ultimately you guys, you gotta understand like inflammation is one of the root causes of, of almost every single disease process, but it's really important for us to understand exactly what this is so we can understand how to correct it and truly get healthy. Because if we can understand this, if we can get to the root causes of inflammatory responses and understand what is going on, it really is going to empower us to correct those underlying causes of damage and disease processes so we can truly get healthy and well. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. So today is the inflammatory inflammation webinar. My name is Dr. Brent DeLong. I'm a max living chiropractor in Norman, Oklahoma. And, you know, we're truly on a mission here in this office to empower people to live longer, healthier lives through the power of chiropractic care and the integration of the five essentials. And we're going to get very, very hyper focused on understanding exactly what the inflammatory response is and what this what this idea of that inflammation is what's causing disease. But you have to understand this. You got to understand exactly what inflammation is, because ultimately inflammation itself is not a bad thing inflammation itself is actually a healthy, normal healing response. And it's in response to stresses and damage. So when you, when you work out and you stress your hand and you build a callus, that's trauma, that's stress to the skin and the skin rebuilds itself to adapt to the stress that's going on. So that is a healthy, normal response. So you have these inflammatory responses that are building up and breaking down. When you have these initial stressors, you get hormonal responses that are catabolic in nature or they're destructive like cortisol, cytokines, interleukins. And these are the things that are breaking down, which again, initially is good when you work out and you stress the muscles, you break down that muscle. But if you remove the stress, so you're giving your body a chance to rest, then it anabolically builds itself back up in a healing adaptive mechanism so that way your body can respond to stress the next time that's all good that is a healing mechanism the problem is when we have these chronic underlying in stresses that are causing these constant inflammatory responses that is when we get into real trouble so understanding acute versus chronic so the the acute stuff is a you know a cut or uh, an, an acute infection, or that exercise, or the callus that I talked about. Those are acute examples. The chronic examples are the ones that we really have to pay attention to because if we're chronically causing damage, like if if you if you if you were causing more damage than your skin could heal, then you're going to get a pretty serious issue. You're going to wear a hole in your hand. So if there's constant chronic underlying damage that is never going away. Your, your body can't catch up, your body can't heal, and that's when we get into major, major trouble. So that's what we're going to focus on is the chronic inflammatory stressors, chronic inflammatory stressors. And in fact, Time Magazine, not too long ago, they had this huge focus on the leading cause of disease, like the underlying leading cause of disease. So what leads to stuff like heart disease, what leads to stuff like cancers is inflammation. Now, what they didn't talk about was what causes the inflammation. What they just talked about was inflammation as the bad guy. And that's just like, that's just like medicine to do. They want to just focus on that thing and then try and, you know, treat that thing, not look at the underlying causes that lead to the inflammation or lead to the disease processes. But it was one step closer looking at the inflammation and not just the end disease role. But, but understand this, like, look at this, depending on where the chronic stressor is, what tissue is being chronically stressed is what's going to lead to the medical system labeling that area, that tissue, that organ is disease. So if you have chronic stress or chronic inflammation that's affecting, you know, the cartilage, well, that's going to lead to bone and joint disease. That's, that's osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, things, things like that. If you have chronic inflammation to your nerve system, like the brain blood barrier, you're going to lead to things like brain fog, or if it's chronic stress to or inflammation to your neurology, it's going to lead to things like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, or MS. If it's to stuff like your pulmonary organs, it's going to lead to asthma, COPD, bronchitis. If it's metabolic, you know, inflammation, it's type two diabetes, it's renal failure, it's acute liver disease. If it's to your cardiovascular system, 
as heart failure, stroke, hypertension, or even to your digestive system, it can lead to digestive dysfunction like Crohn's disease or even autoimmune issues. But this is kind of a major stressor. I mean, if we can even just get this one idea that when we're constantly traumatizing our gut, we get this leaky gut issue. And this leaky gut syndrome is going to allow particles to leach through the gut lining into the bloodstream. And when you have these pathogens or food particles or toxins that go through the gut lining and go into the bloodstream, then you're getting major, major inflammatory immune responses chronically, which are going to lead to diseases. And so just if we can understand what's causing just the leaky gut issue and we can heal and seal like the leaky gut, that's going to minimize so much of these in underlying diseases that are caused by chronic inflammation. But let's, let's continue to dive into this causes of chronic inflammation. These are the major reasons for constant inflammation to the system. It's bad diet and it's food sensitivities and food sensitivities are typically developed by a leaky gut poor microbiome. If you're, if your microbiome is significantly out of balance and you have a bad microbiome or a lot of bad bacteria. If you have SIBO, bad bacterial overgrowth, you're going to have chronic inflammation. If you have consistent infections, consistent infections. In fact, you know, when you, you look back in the history of like war and battles, when someone got injured, it typically wasn't the injury that they died from. It was from the infection that caused systemic inflammation that they actually died from. Chronic exposures to toxins and toxicity is going to cause constant uh, healing responses, inflammatory responses, blood, high, chronic levels of high blood per, blood sugar, chronic levels of high stress, which are going to have high levels of cortisol responses is going to lead to some major chronic inflammatory responses. And then not enough antioxidant support is going to allow these stressors to lead to chronic inflammatory responses, which again will lead downstream to disease processes wherever that inflammatory response is occurring or cueing in, in, the, in the cell tissues and organs or so wherever the tissue is, is going to be the end uh, disease process. So tis the season and we can't talk about, or we can't not talk about sugar. We are in the holiday season. We are in full tilt. We just passed Thanksgiving. Now we're moving into the Christmas holiday. And one of the major sources of chronic inflammatory responses is, is the amount of sugar that we consume. Sugar and rancid oils. These lead to stress and chronic inflammation. If we consistently consume these things, our body is consistently in this stress, trying to defend, trying to heal uh, mechanism. And then again, that's like the major cause of a lot of underlying inflammatory disorders. So the overload of sugar, the average person concern, consumes almost 160 grams of sugar just on Christmas Day. Back 30 years ago, 40 years ago, the average person didn't consume that in an entire year. And now people are consuming that in one day. That is a recipe of disaster for some major damage to our system that will lead to a chronic inflammatory response, which again will lead to disease processes. So the SAD diet, and this is the SAD truth, the standard American diet, that's what that stands for. Standard American diet is the SAD diet. The sad diet is full of breads and pastas and, and um, processed foods. In fact, it's, it's really interesting to look at how the, the, the diet has changed, like the focus on food has really changed over the last you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. It seems like it's really moved away from whole foods, raw, fresh fruits and vegetables and whole grains or sprouted grains and, you know, grass-fed beef, it, it's really shifted to more of a processed, fast food, really quick, really easy diet choices, which unfortunately means that it's a lot less healthy. It's just we're so time constraint stressed out that it's really, well, what most people are looking for is fast and easy and cheap. And unfortunately, that approach to nutrition is not going to equal health. It's going to lead to, you know, this more processed, more, more inflammatory foods. And it's going to lead to more of this chronic inflammation. That's going to lead to more and more of these disease processes. 
But you might sit there and say, well, I don't eat sugar. I hear this all the time. I don't need sugar, Dr. Brent. Well, the reality is there's so many hidden sources of sugar. You're, you're, the odds are that you're consuming a bunch of sugar. And if it's not simple sugar, it's again, it's these processed foods, like processed carbohydrates that are just turning right to, to sugar. So here's just a 56 different names that sugar is kind of hidden behind. Sugar is in everything. It's just, it's crazy when you look at how much the food industry has put sugar into our food. It's almost hard to consume food just from the grocery store that doesn't have a bunch of sugar in it. But this is why you have to understand how to read a food label and understand exactly what's in your food so you know what to avoid. Now, here's a major issue, and I even had a conversation with a patient, a patient earlier this week where they thought they were doing something really good by avoiding sugar, and they were consuming some of these artificial sweeteners like, like Sweet and Low and Splenda. What they didn't realize that these zero-calorie artificial sweeteners are actually more damaging than sugar. You're going to have a greater inflammatory response to these artificial sweeteners which are neurotoxins, they, they, they're, they're neurotoxic, they, they're damaging to your nerve system, but they're going to cause more damage and more of this inflammatory response. It's linked to more. So these artificial sweeteners are more linked to obesity. And I say that specifically, most of the time people are consuming these artificial sweeteners, these zero calorie sweeteners, because they're trying to lose weight. But the reality is how they affect your hormones, like hormones like ghrelin, they're more linked to obesity than normal sugar is. Plus the neurodegeneration that they occur is just, it's really bad. So this is something I'm going to highly, highly recommend that you are not consuming because of the damage inflammatory responses, which is going to lead to more disease processes or even weight gain since with, with these, with these, uh, with these items. So here, what is the solution? So let's get, let's really get nitty gritty and let's talk about ultimately what we can do to start to correct this stuff. And it's pretty simple. It's simple and yet hard. It's simple yet hard. Help, getting healthy ultimately is really, really, really simple. But it's not necessarily easy because the world that we live in is not conducive to producing health. You can't just go to the grocery store and just get food. In fact, this is crazy what you think about, but like 50 years ago, there's no, no such thing as organic food because it was all organic. It was, it was all real healthy food. Nowadays, the food has been so altered and so changed that it's just difficult to go to the grocery store and just find real food. So it's, it's getting healthy is easy. It's simple, but it's difficult because you have to know exactly how to do it and how to navigate through it. So number one is you have to remove the causes of inflammation. So you got to look at all the things that are causing inflammation and how to get rid of it, how to avoid it. So again, just real quick, but the major sources of inflammation. So we got to correct our diet. We got to correct our microbiome. Obviously, we need to avoid infections. We have to find and identify the major sources of toxic exposure and eliminate that. We have to control our blood sugar. We have to control our stress levels. And we have to make sure that we're getting high, high levels of antioxidants to protect us from, you know, oxidative stress and damage from all the different inflammatory uh, dam uh, damaging things that cause inflammation. So here are some of the major food sources that are causing inflammation. Sugar, number one, got to avoid the sugars and all the hidden sources of sugar and all the names that sugar is hidden under. So that's number one. Two is you have to avoid bad fats. You have to avoid bad fats, saturated fats, trans fats. You have to avoid the rancid oils. So things like coconut oil, or I'm sorry, not, not coconut oil, but things like vegetable oil. Um hydrogenated oils like um, um, uh, canola oil, coconut oil, avocado oil, extra virgin olive oil. Those are all great oils. Those are actually anti-inflammatory, but it's the vegetable oils, the canola oils, it's the saturated and trans fats. Like th those are the things that we have to make sure we're avoiding. We cannot, we got, we cannot be consuming these rancid, these rancid fats, these rancid oils. 
You have to avoid refined carbohydrates and white flour products. You got to avoid MSG. You need to look out for gluten. Not everybody is going to have a gluten sensitivity, but most people are going to have bad responses to gluten. You, you want to avoid stuff like casein. That's an, a very high inflammatory thing. Again, the artificial sweeteners and the artificial sugars like aspartame and alcohol is another, it's another major source of, of inflammation. It puts a lot of stress and strain on your liver. And if your liver is already stressed out, it's going to be hard for the, the liver to actually just function in, in normal exposures to toxins, which you're going to talk about. So if you can avoid a lot of alcohol, you're going to take a lot of stress off your, off your liver and allow your liver to do its job, which is detox the body. So that way you're not, again, getting this toxic accumulation that's leading to more disease processes down the road. So those are the major sources from food that we want to be able to avoid and take out to, to really lower our inflammatory responses and to get rid of this inflammation. So if you're doing an anti-inflammatory diet, these are the things that you have to avoid. You have to check your home for toxins. We are bombarded, bombarded by toxins. In fact, they did this study. So this is a, this is a crazy thing to think about. But they did a study where they looked at brand new baby, um, blood, like toxicities in brand new babies. So they looked at um, cord blood, like blood in the cord. Um, the, uh, and they, they found that there are over like 230 different chemicals like toxic chemicals in brand new baby cord blood. So the babies had barely been exposed to the world and they're bombarded by over 230 different toxic chemicals and that's environmental toxins. So we have to be very, very acutely aware of where the major sources of toxins are coming from. So that way we can avoid them because you can't avoid all of them because there's just over 70,000 different chemicals just in our current environment from the air you breathe, the water you drink, all this stuff. But you, you want to be able to control what you can control and minimize what you are exposed to. So this is where you have to be very, very acutely aware, again, of what chemicals are in your home that you can remove. So these are the top six toxic areas of toxic exposure. Number one is medication. The number one is medication. All medications are chemicals. Now, I understand that sometimes medications are important and they are needed. But if you're constantly taking a medication that is covering up a symptom and that you're not getting to the root cause and you're not focusing on getting healthy, you're just consistently taking the medication, you're going to get really, really sick. I mean, we know that. Like, we know that most lifestyles are, are causing disease processes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, you know, things like that. Like it, you can lifestyle, you can correct these things and not need the medication. In fact, that's the ultimate goal. If you're going to go to a real, real healthcare provider, not, not a medical provider, not someone who's going to administer medicine, but a real healthcare provider, someone who's going to help you get so healthy so strong that you don't need a medication. That is what real healthcare is. One of the major problems with our current healthcare system is that they call it healthcare, where it's not healthcare, it's disease management care. If you have diabetes and you go to the medical doctor and they give you medication, the odds that you have diabetes forever are really high because the medications are not curing you. What they're doing is they're helping minimizing the negative effects of the blood sugar on your system. But it, you're, you're always gonna have diabetes. Now, if you went to a real healthcare provider, someone who's going to help you get healthy, then you're, you could potentially reverse diabetes or manage it to where you don't even need the medication, but you're, you're correcting it through lifestyle. That's the ultimate goal. In fact, some of the most toxic ones are the ones that people take all the time, like NSAIDs, like, like Tylenol, Ibuprofen, Advil. You know, people feel bad. They take one of these medications. They feel better. So they think that they're better. So they wake up the next day and they do the same thing over and over again. And that is one of the major causes of damage to the kidney, the liver, the stomach. And that's what's going to cause these chronic underlying inflammatory problems. So number one is medication. That's the number one most toxic exposure. Number two is household like cleaning products, household cleaning products. This is an easy one to change out. 
there are really good healthy examples of non-toxic cleaning products that you can utilize to really get a good clean home that's not going to cause damage to you, your kids, your pets. So I would highly look at your, your, your cleaning products and start making a change to a healthier, non-toxic cleaning products. And there's a lot of them out there. In fact, Max Mama's is the store that we go to uh, where we consume or we buy our non-toxic cleaning products. But you can even make your own cleaning products through essential oils, which a lot of times is what we'll use at our house as well. Toxic cookware. So if you're using Teflon, if you're still using Teflon, um, that is a major source of chemical exposures that's going to lead to, again, some of this underlying constant systemic uh, inflammatory responses. Tap water, a lot of toxins in tap water, especially if you live where I live down here in Oklahoma. Um, in Norman, there was a big issue with chromium in the water, just like <laughs> Aaron Brockovich, the movie that, or the, I, the, that they made a movie over it. But again, understanding that there's some major, major chemicals in your tap water, like fluoride and chlorine um, and different heavy metals that could be in there as well. So heavy metal molds and biotoxins. So things like amalgam fillings, molds in your house, biotoxins that you're exposed to. Those are things that you can correct. Foods are, are this is a big deal too. GMOs, you got to avoid GMOs. They're, they're really, really damaging, especially when you have the glyphosate or the Roundup, all this stuff, like the pesticides that are on your food, those are things that you've got to make sure you're avoiding. So real quick, I'm going to go back to number two, because it's not just the cleaning products, it's also the cosmetics. I want you to think about all the different things that you're maybe putting on your skin. So is your makeup non-toxic? Is your deodorants non-toxic? Is your moisturizer non-toxic? Is your lotions non-toxic? What's in your toothpaste? You got to look at what's in all these different things. What's in your hand soaps? You know, are you using an antibacterial hand soap? I mean, all these things are terrible for you. So, you, but they're really easy to switch out. I mean, there's great examples. In fact, so my wife uses for her makeup and stuff like that. She uses a, a, a brand called 100% Pure. That's just, and she's been through all sorts of different brands on, on which ones are the least toxic. And so anyway, there's really good, easy alternatives to those. You just got to make sure you're identifying the major sources of toxicities and starting to switch those out. Also, we're just constantly bombarded by toxins. So obviously go through those top six and start to switch those out, but just understand that you're still going to get exposed to toxins. So one of the things that I highly, highly recommend is that we consistently try to detox our system. So toxins go out. Toxins need to, toxins come in, toxins got to go out. Now our body is supposed to naturally self detox. That's why we have detoxification organs. That's why sweating is so important, but we want to make sure that we are consistently feeding our body different things that are going to aid in the detoxification process. So really consuming a lot of methyl groups, foods that are high in methyl groups that are aiding our body's ability to detox. And there's some really specific supplements that I really, really do promote that help with the body detoxing. We have a detox system here in the office and we have some different cleanses that we highly recommend that really just help with liver function, kidney function, you know, cleansing the colon, again, allowing your body to get these toxins out so it can help manage the toxins that come in on a regular basis. Stress and blood sugar. Tis the season to be stressful. <laughs> okay. 88% of Americans are crazy stressed out in the holidays. And I started to see it already in practice with patients coming in, just the, 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 the travel, the holiday parties, the family, the get togethers. It's just it, the, the financial stresses of the holidays and presents and travel and stuff like that. So just understand that high levels of stress are known to create high levels of blood sugar, cortisol issues, which are underlying how, how emotional stress will manifest into chronic systemic inflammation. So we have to really do a good job with managing stress over the holidays. And there's some, there's some specific stuff that we'll kind of consistently talk about here in the office, but you know, an easy way to manage stress is to try to live in a state of gratitude. Wake up in the morning, do your prayers and your 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 meditations and your in your in, in your grateful mindsets. Go through a gratitude list at night. 
go go through a gratitude list, get get into that state of prayer and meditation. These are the things that you can control. You know, there's this saying that nothing in life that happens is either good or bad. It's thinking that makes it so. It's not what happens. It's how you respond to it. Your primary thought will manifest even into your physical self. If you're constantly thinking about all the things that are stressing you out and you're constantly feeding these negative thoughts and all this negative stuff, your body is going to react in this defense mechanism in there. You're going to have higher levels of stress hormones, blood sugar issues, constant, constant fight or flight physiology. And it is going to just cause massive inflammatory responses because, again, that's a healing mechanism. But when the stress never goes away because you're constantly in that mindset, you're going to cause damage to your physiology. And it's going to lead to a lot more of these disease processes downstream because of the constant inflammatory response to these stress hormones. So you really need to work on your mindset specifically in this time of year, being grateful. Now, here are the top three anti-inflammatory foods. Number one are berries. These are great. They're packed with antioxidants, they're packed with fiber, and they're packed full of vitamins and minerals. Now, this is important. you got to make sure that you're getting organic berries. And that's important because they're going to have higher levels of phytonutrients. So organic versus non-organic, they're going to have the same amount of, like, say, vitamin A and vitamin C. But what the organic is going to have is higher levels of phytonutrients, and that is what is really important for your metabolic function, especially with your antioxidants and defending against this stressors and this inflammatory responses. The other reason that you want to do organic specifically with berries is because they're they're really highly loaded with pesticides. So there's a lot of pesticides residue on your like fruits and veggie, uh, fruits and berries. And so that's another reason why, again, you want to go organic because you want to avoid the toxic onslaught of that. So consuming a high level of, of, of berries, and that's strawberries, obviously blueberries, blackberries, all berries are really low on the glycemic index as well. And so they're not, not going to create a lot of um, um, high levels of blood sugar or, or high levels of in, insulin response. And so they're really, really good for anti-inflammatory foods. Wild caught fish, really high amounts of healthy fats in your wild caught fish, so not your farm raised fish. And then, pack, I mean, you really need to start packing your 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 meals full of dark green leafies, full of antioxidants, vitamins and minerals. Again, you want to move more organic because you're going to have high level of those phytonutrients again for your metabolic function, your antioxidants, and to really defend yourself against those different stressors and inflammatory responses. Now, if you want things that are sweet, you know, try to move to these, you know, foods that are lower levels on the glycemic index. Again, like veggies, Granny Smith apples, stuff like that. Now, if you want to sweeten something, so for, for example, like in my coffee, you know, what I'll put in is a little bit of stevia. Now, I'll use it sparingly because even stuff like stevia or xylitol or monk fruit or alcohol um, sweeteners, they're, they're not artificial sweeteners. So they're not in the same category like your aspartame or your sweeten lows, but they do create an insulin response. And so you do want to use them sparingly, but it is definitely what, what I will choose to put into a coffee or like if we're going to bake cookies, we're going to use xylitol and not sugar. So again, you want to be able to use healthy alternatives to sugar because you're not going to get that inflammatory response. Now, this is, these are the kind of the main supplements that I'm going to recommend to balance out inflammation. In fact, this is really what I'm going to, like, what I take. It, uh, taking a really healthy omega, whether it's the optimal omega or the, the max omega-3, like you see in the picture right here, those are, those are really good healthy fats. And that is ultimately the number one most nutrient deficiency in our standard American diet is healthy fat. Remember back in the day, fat got such a bad rap because, you know, the thought was that fat makes you fat. Well, we know that's not true. It's not fat that makes us fat. It's the, it's the body's inability to burn fat that makes us fat. And when they took all the fat out, they started and they started making us think that fat was bad. What they started replacing fat with was sugar. So when you look at like low fat or no fat, like food choices, they're really packed full of sugar. And that's what leads to these inflammatory responses in the high levels of sugar, which create high levels of insulin. That's what makes it impossible to burn fat because your fat burning hormones 
like leptin are inversely related to leptin or, or to, to, to insulin. And so if you're consuming, consuming foods that increase your blood sugar and then it increases your insulin, you are stuck in this, this like sugar burning metabolism. And it's like impossible to burn fat. So it's sugar and things that increase your insulin levels in these inflammatory responses that create this weight loss resistance. In fact, one of the major reasons that someone would get a lot of fat around their midsection is because their body is chronically inflamed and they're, they're having a lot of leaky gut type issues. And so that's why they can't lose weight, no matter what their exercise program looks like, because they're, they're just, they're inflamed and they're having all these different, you know, high levels of insulin and, and stress response hormones. So that's why they have that. So consuming high levels of healthy fat, like grass fed beef, wild caught fish, like those, those are, those are anti-inflammatory. Those healthy fats will actually help move you to more of a fat burning metabolism. And so I'm a big fan of consuming omega supplements like the optimal omega or your own, you know, this max omega three here. Another one of my fan favorites is going to be your max greens. Nobody consumes enough vegetables. It's just, it's, it's impossible. Specifically when you talk about the nutrients you need from vegetables you know, one cup of iron or, you know, one cup of spinach 50 years ago has as much iron as, you know, 50 cups of spinach today. It's just, there's not enough with the soil depletion and nutrient deficiencies in our food. Even if you're someone who eats a ton of fruits and vegetables, the odds that you're getting enough of the phytonutrients, enough of the, you know, the antioxidants and things like that, odds are that you're not consuming enough. And so just an easy way for me to make sure that I'm consuming enough of the nutrients is by doing the max greens. In fact, one of the things I love about the max greens is that I can put it into smoothies and my little girl loves her smoothies and she's a really picky eater. And of course, like every other, you know, six year old, she's not a fan of spinach <laughs> or sometimes of the dark green leafies and all the really healthy vegetables that she needs to be eating. So if she's not wanting to consume those. It's a really easy way to sneak some of these max greens into her smoothie. So that way I know that her body is getting enough of these antioxidants and these nutrients to protect her, her body and her health and, and making sure she's getting all that. So that's another one of my absolute favorites. And then curcumin is just a powerhouse anti-inflammatory nutrient. It is, it is amazing. It is, it is one of the healthiest things you can do to consume to reduce your systemic inflammation. And this, this is one of those supplements that I'll actually give out if someone has a lot of like arthritic pain, like if they have arthritis in their wrists, hands, elbows, knees, back, or whatever, this is like one of the healthiest anti-inflammatory supplements that you could consume in the market today. And so it's, so our specifically, one of the reasons I'm such a big fan of the Max Living brand is because of the Pure Path standard. It's high quality, it is highly absorbable, and it is bioavailable. You know, one of the worst things you could do is spend money on supplements that just don't work. So I'll never recommend going cheap and going to a big box store and buying really cheap supplements because you're not going to use them. They're all artificial. They're synthetic. They're not whole food. It's, it's, not, it's not clean. It's full of preservatives and artificial ingredients. And your body just not only is it not going to use it, it, but it could actually do more harm. So don't, don't go the cheap route when it comes to supplementation. Go to the good route. Make sure you're getting bioavailable, whole food, really clean supplementation. So here's my absolute favorite when it comes to regulating inflammation. Now, this is the season of sugar. And I know that all of us will indulge a little bit. I mean, even myself, I tend to eat a little bit more sugar during the holiday season. So this is one of the supplement bundles that I'm going to be taking consistently throughout the holiday season to try to offset any of the extra sugar that I'm consuming. So the chromium chelate, this is one of those things that really help balance your blood glucose levels, as, especially when you use it synergistically with the glucose support. And then obviously increasing my fiber intake is going to help with offsetting, you know, high levels of like maybe blood sugar. So those, this is the, if you're consuming blood sugar, if you're consuming maybe more sugar throughout the season, or if you're someone who have, has, has had issues with regulating your blood sugar or like pre-diabetic or something like that, this is something that you absolutely want to be consuming specifically for trying to reduce this inflammatory responses throughout the holiday season. So this is another bundle that I'm going to absolutely recommend that you start to get on specifically during this time of year. Daily essentials. You know, I was talking with someone, you know, earlier this week, a patient of mine, when we were talking about just overall nutrition and 
there, she was asking me, Hey, what supplements do I need to take? And I was asking her what her goals are. And I was asking her what supplements she already takes. And she didn't, she didn't really know where to start. She knew that like taking vitamins and supplements were important, but she didn't know what to do. And so I love that we put together this like daily essentials packet. These are what I would consider my five non-negotiable supplements that I take every day. This stuff, yeah, I don't take, I mean, I take the greens pretty much every day and, I, and there's an omega in the, uh, the essential bundle, but I don't take this every day. I'm not always consuming, you know, chromium chelate. I'm not always increasing my fiber intake. I'm not always taking glucose support. I'm only taking these when I know that I'm consuming a little bit more sugar if I've been having some inflammatory issues. But these are the ones that I think are non-negotiable. You need to take these every single day. You need to take a multivitamin. You need to take a good omega. You need to take magnesium. You've got to be taking a B12 complex or a B complex for metabolic function. And you need to make sure you're doing a vitamin D3 with probiotics. And ours comes with probiotics for absorption. But the vitamin D3 is really about immune support. So th these are just, these are the, the, the supplements that I, I recommend everybody do every single day. You don't need a bunch of fancy blood tests to know that you need to do a multivitamin, omega, magnesium, B complex, and, and vitamin D3. These are just the things you need to be taking consistently every single day. One of the reasons why I love this the most is because it comes in these little packets. Like this is my daily serving, has all the supplements I need. So I can put it in my pocket. I'm not going through and having to open up, you know, five different bottles and pour five different supplements in my hand and shove them in my pocket. But I can take them just like this, go on the day, take them throughout the day when I, when I have time. So this is something I'm just, I, I recommend that everybody take on a consistent basis. And if you're not taking them, this is this is a good place to start. Exercise is one of the best ways to lower inflammation, is specifically not not real hard. Like if you're, and I'm not talking about like real heavy weightlifting or CrossFit, but I'm talking about just kind of just mild to moderate type exercises. Beautiful for reducing inflammation. In fact, one of the one of the ones that I recommend to 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 people or to patients is Max T3. One of the reasons I like it the most is because it's it, it, it's short duration, relatively high intensity, but it only takes 12 minutes. It's 12 minutes of exercise, but it produces the most efficient and effective results. So most of the reason why it's hard to exercise is people don't have time or they don't want to spend the money you know, on a gym membership or whatever, or they don't know what to do. They go to the gym, but they don't know what exercises to do. And so Max T3 is a, is a, is a website-based um, exercise plan. So it shows you exactly what to do. So it has a program. So this day you're going to do this, this day you're going to do this, this day you're going to do this. And my favorite part is it's only 12 minutes. It only takes you 12 minutes to do this exercise and you get a really, really good workout, but it's, it's really highly effective. It's, it's, it's ideal for weight loss and increasing lean muscle. It's one of the most beautiful metabolic conditioning that you can be you know exposed to. So it's just max t3.com. Check it out. It's, it's, it's like, 20 bucks. It's a one-time payment. You get access to the website and then you'll be able to get on there and just follow along with these exercise videos. It's, it's an awesome resource. My patients love it. Now, when it comes to physiology and neurology and how your body responds to inflammation, this is one thing that I really wanted to touch on. They did this study where they took these mice and they basically clipped the vagal nerve and the vagal nerve is cranial nerve 10. It's called the wanderer. It comes out of the brainstem and it is the parasympathetic part of your autonomic nerve system. So autonomic or automatic. Parasympathetic is the part of your nerve system that's in control of rest and digest. This would be like if you're in this, this, this parasympathetic mode, your body is healing. The opposite of that is sympathetic. In sympathetic mode is your fight or flight. That's the chronic stress. That's why your mindset is so important because when you're in stress mode, you're in sympathetic mode. And when we're constantly in the sympathetic mode, your body is not worried about healing because short-term sympathetic stress is great. That's you, that's you getting away from you know, a bear attack or you're, you're getting away from an acute stressor so you can survive. But when you're constantly in this state, in this chronic stressful world that we live in, if you're constantly stressed out, you're in this sympathetic overload, your, your body is just in a state of inflammation and it's a state of disease building. But if you can increase your parasympathetic state by reducing sympathetic, increasing parasympathetic, or increasing your vagal tone, 
your body moves back into an anti-inflammatory or healing state. So in this study, they cut the vagal nerve. So the vagal tone, that parasympathetic nerve system decreased in function. And so by default, the sympathetic it was in dominant and the, these mice just were so inflamed and they built disease at this crazy accelerated rate. Now on the flip side, instead of cutting that nerve, if they went in and they stimulated the vagal nerve, so they're trying to stimulate the parasympathetic nerve system, it actually put them out of a state of sympathetic and then back into parasympathetic. And then their body's reduction in inflammation was incredible. In fact, they did this study. So then they moved it to human trials and they did this study with a sympathetic or, or they, they did a study using a vagal nerve stimulator. So here was the here's just the gist of the study. They had a thousand people apply to the study where they were going to put a vagal nerve stimulator on these people. And out of the thousand, they accepted a hundred and out of a hundred people, and they all had inflammatory autoimmune disease like rheumatoid arthritis. And out of a hundred people, all of them had a reduction in symptoms and chronic inflammation and a bunch of them went into remission. Current medicine is really trying to jump on this vagal nerve stimulation to reduce chronic levels of autoimmune disease and inflammatory disorders by trying to stimulate this vagal nerve. You just Google vagal, vagal nerve stimulator, you're going to see a ton of stuff come up. But ultimately, understand this. If you have a misalignment or subluxation in your spine, a lot of upper spine misalignments that we'll see from stresses and traumas and, and text neck syndrome... But if you get adjusted, so what they found was when you got adjusted, it increases vagal tone and it reduces systemic inflammation simply by stimulating your vagal nerve. It doesn't involve a knife and it doesn't involve putting a battery pack on your vagal nerve through surgery. You simply just get adjusted and the research shows that you have a reduction in overall inflammatory responses. And so it's one of the best ways to balance your sympathetic and your parasympathetic nerve system is just by simply getting adjusted. And that's why so many patients that may come in initially because their back hurts or their neck hurts, but once they start getting adjusted, they just notice, they just notice that overall their stress response is so much lower and that they just feel better. And I can't tell you how many patients with autoimmune issues have come in and got adjusted and they started to feel better. Then they started to implement the nutrition stuff. Then they started to implement the gut healing protocols and removing the stresses and, and changing their foods out. And that's when we have some just incredible testimonies of people being able to come off medications because they got so healthy that they didn't need that stuff. And that's remember, that's the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal isn't to, isn't to just not take a drug. It's to not need a medication. The goal is to get so healthy and so strong that our bodies just simply don't need the medication because there's no disease processes and we feel amazing. Now, here are different warning signs that there could be misalignments in your spine. Headaches, misalignments in the upper part of the neck, putting pressure on the brainstem, controlling blood flow and oxygen to the brain. Misalignments, menstrual problems, misalignments in the lower back. I see a lot of, especially young girls that have crazy, crazy menstrual issues, whether it's their cycles are crazy or that's so bad that they have to be put on, like their, their cramps are so bad, they have to be put on, you know, birth control because they can't, you know, miss all that school because it's so bad. Or I'll have patients that their cycles are so bad that they, you know, they've been trying to get pregnant for years and years and years and they can't get pregnant. Well, they come in, they start getting adjusted. We get pressure off the nerve system and the organs start to function normal and their cycles start to regulate and, and boom, all of a sudden they get pregnant. High blood pressure. Research was a, a study was published in the Journal of Hypertension that if you can correct an upper cervical misalignment, it lowers blood pressure 18 points on average better than two different medications. Depression. Again, upper misalignments cause blood pooling in the venous plexus, and it really affects serotonin regulation. So when patients come in and they start to get adjusted, again, go back, look at the testimonies about people getting adjusted, and all of a sudden, they feel like they don't need their depression medication anymore because they're regulating their serotonin levels so much better on their own. They don't need those SSRIs to help. Numbs and tingling down the leg or down the arm. Again, those are signs of pinched nerves, neck pain, dizziness, fatigue, acid reflux, stress in the upper part of the back that affect the nerves that go into the upper stomach. So again, it's not the food we eat, it's the body's inability to regulate stomach acid from those foods. 
food intolerances, asthma, allergies, ear infections. We deal a lot with this in the cold and food season, especially with little kids. If there's a misalignment up here at the top, it actually changes the shape of the eustachian tube. It makes it go flat. The misalignment does. And it leads you really prone to getting clogging in your eustachian tube, which would lead to an ear infection. Now, in the medical world, they want to give antibiotics, which is you know, kind of barbaric since all the research shows that 85% of ear infections are viral. So obviously an antibiotic doesn't do anything for a virus, but when you can get adjusted, it can help correct that misalignment in the eustachian tube, again, make it angled, angled down so it can drain. And then all these kids do amazing getting adjusted with their ear infections. So they don't need more and more of these rounds of antibiotics. Chronic flus, colds, again, when you get adjusted to boost your immune system, Misalignments in the middle or lower part of the back that slow down the digestive system can cause constipation. Attention or ADD type issues are a dopamine imbalance, a neurotransmitter imbalance. Again, that's regulated through your nervous system. So misalignments specifically in your neck can affect things like that. Obviously, sleep issues. I just had a patient come in today. They had misalignments in their spine. They literally just couldn't get comfortable. Their the sleep was terrible. Any kind of skin issue or eczema is going to be a uh, toxicity issue. And so getting adjusted helps with your body's ability to like detox through helping things like your liver or your digestive system. So again, these are all warning signs that there could be a misalignment or a subluxation in your spine that you need to seek chiropractic assessment. So they need to be able to do an exam and an x-ray, find these misalignments. So that way they can start to correct those different subluxations. And so that's one of the main things that we'll focus in in our office. Yes, we're going to talk about nutrition and better food choices in eliminating these toxic ingredients and these toxic foods. We're absolutely going to identify all these different sources of toxins that you're exposed to, but we have to make sure that there's not going to be any interference to your body's ability to self-heal and self-regulate. So you got to make sure you're getting with a good chiropractor looking for misalignments through things like scans and x-rays. So understanding kind of goals moving forward, identify all the major sources in your life that are causing le high levels of inflammation. Start to reduce those, change out your nutrition choices, avoid these toxins. Again, it's really simple. I said in the beginning, getting healthy is really simple. It can be complicated. Making better food choices isn't always easy. Buying the right food choices, coming up with recipes that are healthier ingredients, those aren't always easy, but they can be simple. You just, you got to know what to do. So make sure you're getting online, going to maxliving.com, looking at our recipe books, reading more about the articles, just understanding more and more about how to change out healthy products for non healthy products for bad, you know, toxic ingredients, for non-toxic ingredients, or better food choices, or how to make healthy recipes. All that stuff is out there. Again, go to Max T, you know, go to, go to the Max Living website, look at this stuff. It's really, really simple. You just got to know what to do and make the choice to, to get healthy for you and your family. All right, guys. That was, uh, we're going to consistently follow up with this. So get plugged in, make sure you guys are getting connected with whether that's the other, you know, it's, it's the other um, uh, webinars that we've done or in the office, you know, asking the staff about the rest of the holiday recipe book and stuff like that, or whatever it is. Or if you have questions about the bundles and, and what you need to do to make sure you're getting onto the supplements, we have, obviously we're going to have big discounts in the office following this event to make sure you're able to get those bundles and those resources that you need. But make sure you're talking to this, the team and asking questions and getting involved. That way you're able to get healthy, avoid these underlying chronic disease processes. Because I promise you this, if you can do this, if you can start to focus in on reducing these chronic inflammatory responses, you're just, you're going to feel better. You're, you're, you're going to have less aches and pains. If you can reduce that inflammation, I promise you're going to feel 10 or 20 years younger. You're going to have more energy, better sleep, better hormone regulation. It's just it, your, your body is going to express an abundance of health if you can just reduce the causes of this chronic inflammatory responses. So, all right, guys, hope you learned a lot. If you have questions, make sure you follow up. We'll talk to you later.